Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Oh, he's back. He's back, Anthony. Deej. Deej. DJ Tanner, our favorite. Deej. Our favorite. Build the wall, governor. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yep, he's back, dude. I, I like where these nicknames are going. Yeah. yeah. People loved Build the Wall Governor. I was Meatloaf in the Marine Corps. There was a lot of memes wanna... after that that episode of, of Build the Wall Governor. Oh yeah. 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 The Drink It Bros community doesn't fuck around with memes. <laughs> like we'll say something and I don't we we'd go off the cuff. Some of the shows, the new show we have topics, like a list of topics that we're gonna hit. But usually this is just all off the cuff stuff. Yeah. And people come up to me like that thing that happened on the Dan Cummins episode a month or so ago, uh I said something about bonding with Casey Anthony over an abortion or some yeah, shit yeah, like yeah. that. And people, abortion bonding. people DM me all the time like, oh, abortion bombing, bonding. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, no, I had to go back and listen to that shit. The community is so fast on this stuff. They were making memes and, and oh, my God. So this guy is a piece of shit, right? Yeah. We all know that. Definitely. Obviously. Not. Definitely. Not. Uh, Definitely not. Yeah, you are. You're one, of the, you're one of those guys who's uh, just the way you live your life in general lends itself to stories and nicknames and stuff like that. Yeah, you took two of the hugest shits of all time. Three today, right? Was that was that your third earlier? He's on that uh, Z Pack, so yeah, Z-Pack. Uh, you in that Z Pack. Stopped Shikor? him up a little bit and now it's all it's all just chugga 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 just uh chugga. hot and long all day long. <laughs> hot There's and nothing long. like a dirty, dirty hot and long. That's what Jesse, his wife calls poops. Hot, a hot, and, hot long. and long. Well, she was thinking of the most uncomfortable ways to talk to people about taking a shit in a conversation. <laughs> well, there's she no goes, comfortable way. If a girl tells a guy that she's got to go take a hot and long, <laughs> that immediately nukes it. Is there do, I, like I, you? You fuck. You fuck a lot of weird, yeah, random I, people. What? What's the? Are you turned off by anything? I mean, I definitely don't like shit. You know, uh, so if a girl's just like, "Hey, I just got to take a quick shit, and then we can fuck." No, there's a. I'd be okay with that. There's okay. There, uh, there's one time. Really. I would not be okay with that. There, there was a time that I was seeing a girl in Thailand, right? Did, did I talk about this? No. Where, where she forced me into having sex with her? Anal Is, sex. When you say anal sex? Yeah, she like forced me. I didn't talk about this? No. Okay. Hashtag so, me too, apparently. So, dude, uh, she's on her period. I met her in Thailand. She was Canadian. And things were great. I think I did talk about her. How I tricked, my, I tricked her in the banging my buddy to go away. Man, I don't think so. This I don't is, think so. You just bro. went next level with that one. There's a whole fucking conspiracy involved now. And, what and the now, fuck? like she, you, she took a shit too. Uh, okay, so met her uh, 2010 ish, and I was just intimidated. Honestly, dude, she's a cool chick. We're actually still friends, right? Were you but living in Thailand? I was living there six months. Okay, uh, on a deployment or just voluntary? quit my job, quit my fucking. Job. You know, I, I again, I have this philosophy: if you don't like where you're at, and I don't believe in, I've always wanted to, or I wish. I just said, I'm going to fucking move to Thailand. I'm going to start fighting. So I did. Quit my job. Uh, Six-figure income. Quit. Moved to Thailand. Lived there six months. Fucking never looked back. It was great. Right? Great fucking experience. But uh, yeah, I met this girl. She was Western. And, you know, we were, we were kind of hanging out for a week. And we wanted to have sex. And she was on her period. Okay. Right? And so a like guy I, like you doesn't care about like that. Like I give a fuck. Yeah, 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 right. I'm not a sex coward. So, but she doesn't. <laughs> but she doesn't care. She doesn't care. So I mean, what the fuck ever. A uh, couple couple days pass, and finally she's like, "All right, today's the day. I'm not on my period." And I'm like, "Oh, right on." So I end up making it back to her bungalow, and I go to have sex with her. And right before we do, she goes to the restroom. And she comes out. And she says, "Fuck, I'm still spotting." And I'm like, okay, like, again, like, I care. Yeah, exactly. So she, then she said, how do you feel about anal sex? And again, I'm, I'm not a sex coward. So I'm like, um, sure, you know, I guess, right? And well, look, some people <laughs> prefer anal versus vaginal. You mm-hmm. one of those dudes? I mean, we had this conversation. There's already. some women like that, too, by what? the way. I know. Oh, yeah. I'm, this one woman I know, she's like, it's not like I enjoy vaginal sex, too, but I prefer anal. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, we, that's we all whole, know them. Yeah, that's a whole. Like, also, you know who else performs man. anal sex? Uh, gay people. Yeah. yeah. Fun fact. Fun fact. Fun fact. And, and That's, anyway. I, did you read down on the top of one of those Snapple lids? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I got it from a cough drop, actually. Mm. <laughs> it's like gay people love anal. And I'm like, oh, shocking. Who knew? Who knew? Right? Who knew? But anyway, so this girl says, how do you feel about anal? And I'm like, oh, sure. And so she goes to her, her dresser and she starts looking for stuff. And she finds lube. By lube, I mean legitimate straight up coconut oil. Right? So I'm like. Yeah, that oh. works. Yeah, that's fine. So she gets coconut oil and I'm like, oh, fuck. 
All right, right. You gotta on. get the extra virgin one because it doesn't have yeah. quite the aroma. No, like yeah. legit, yeah. like yeah. cooking coconut oil. So she's yeah. like, she looks at me. She's going. She's like, shit, I don't have. This will work. And I'm like, okay. And so, uh, man, I could have sworn I, I swear I talk about this, but I probably told the story so many times. So she's like, okay, some people have dicks like this because I bent her over to have sex with her. And she said, some people's dicks are like this, but yours is like this. So on your back, straight up like a champ, dude, because we're trying and it just wasn't working. Yeah, you definitely haven't so, told this story on the show before. No, no. Fuck. So, so I get on no, my back, right? Fucked. And to be honest, like, again, cool chick, but I'm intimidated, dude. I'm like young in my fucked up, you know, sexual experience. So I just kind of lay down and I'm almost like at the position of attention in the military. Like, fucking, I just lock up. And she just squats over me and does all the work. N- typically... I mean, if you're listening to the podcast and I've slept with you, obviously you're like, oh, I know Justin, right? But, <laughs> but what I did was I just fucking stiffened, stiffened my body up and I just got real tight and I just kind of sat there and she did all the work. And she was like, ooh, ooh, because it was anal. Re- re- oh, yeah. Are we talking reverse cowboy, reverse cowgirl anal then? Is, Is she, she facing, facing you? Or? She's facing yeah. me. Okay. Oh, all right. right. So that's and she's like, ooh. Cowgirl anal. Man, ooh. that's a tough ride. And so we go until I finish and... uh Whatever, we're done. How long would you say it was? Uh, 30 seconds. No, I'm did, you wear, <laughs> did you wear a condom for that? Oh, yeah, I definitely did, and I'll explain why here in a second. Oof. Uh, not why, but how, or I'll tell you where there's evidence, scientific data. Jesus Christ. Um, finish the so, story. So, she, so whatever, we finish. <laughs> and honestly, dude, I was kind of intimidated just because it happened like so fast. Like We got into her place. I think, I'm thinking I'm going to have sex. We don't even make out. There's no foreplay. She's like... Fuck, I'm still... Sp- How do you feel about anal? And I'm like, uh, love anal. And she's like, on your... Okay, yeah, bend over. No, it doesn't... On your back. And she explains the whole dick process. So I'm like, am I seeing a doctor or a fucking girl that I'm about to sleep with? Right? Because she's explaining. I'm like, oh, well, some penises are like this and yours is at this angle. And like, on your back, on your back. So whatever. I get... I, I lay down. She finishes. She takes the condom off. She's like, I'll take care of it because, you know, things get messy, I guess, when you do anal or whatever, which I know. So she takes off the condom and I'm still laying there like all stiff, like, fuck, I'm intimidated. And she gets the condom and she starts dangling it over my head. She's like, ha, 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 ha. She starts like almost trying to hit me with it. And I'm like fucking squirming like, dude. That's called truffle I'm, butter, by yeah, the way. I'm already, I'm already <laughs> weird about You know that song that came out that everybody loved was about butt sex. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm intimidated. That was that. And I, I'm like, okay, bye. Hey. And I hop on my scooter and I start trying to make it to my apartment. I lived maybe four or five, six blocks away. My buddy lived one block away from her bungalow and I hop on my scooter and I'm like, Bruh. I don't even make it to my place. I'm just cringing, dude, because again, I'm, I'm pretty, it's like 2010, like having, a, I've had a lot of sexual experiences, but this is one of my first like quote unquote fucked up ones and nothing's fucked up. We all have, sex is just sex, dude. So cool. Uh, I make it to my buddy's apartment, like one block away and I start knocking on his door and he opens it. It's like three in the morning. He's like, dude, what the fuck, dude? What, what's going on? He's waking up. I'm like, give me a towel. Give me a towel. He's like, why? And I, I tell him the whole story. I shower real quick. I tell him the story. She dangled a condom over my head, brother. Like, I just met her. It was, I fucking, I feel so belittled, bro. Like, and I start crying. Hashtag me too. I'm going to tell the story <laughs> in the me too movement years later. Anyway, so, so uh, whatever, that's that. Well, a couple days later, all the Westerners kind of kick it together. And we're having uh, lunch or dinner. And we're all hanging out. And uh, she makes a joke about, well, what? I'm a f-, and I told my, my like one or two buddies that were Western. And so we're hanging out with all these Swedes slash uh, Americans slash if you speak English. And we're all kind of having dinner. And she says, what? I'm a girl. I've got no shame. I love sucking dick and anal sex. And she's sitting like next to him. And he's make, I mean, I make eye contact with him. like told you about the anal thing. And he doesn't just try and not make it obvious. He starts trying to kick my foot. But we're at a table of like 10 of us. So he's like fidgeting and like his legs like hitting the table. Making it very fucking obvious. Like that obvious. one asshole like, hey, look at that. Yeah. Look at that right yeah. there. And yeah. they're it's kind of like when you, it? it's like, like on, when you put a, a hand up next to you at a bar and you're trying to bang the girl next to you. And you'll put your hand up and you'll be like, I'm going to fuck the shit out of this girl. And you point through your hand and you say it so loud like your hand's just going to block all that sound. You know what I mean? Like yeah. creates a sound block. But anyway, so he's like fidgeting and I'm, I'm looking at him. I know he's trying to kick my foot, right? I'm fucking 5'5". Five five. I got short legs. So he's reaching and I'm like, motherfucker, like I, I get it. I get it. I know what you're trying to do. E- even but, if he hadn't done that. Though. Yeah. 
But but he still yeah he still is like I'm trying to get the message across, brother. We're on the same team. You told me the story, so he's yeah. reaching. Probably kicks like three four people in the process, and when he kicks my leg. I, I give him a look like I get it, motherfucker. Yeah. Like hey, we were good. Yeah, we're yeah. good. We're good when we looked at each other, and I smirked, cocksucker. Like yeah, you don't have to fucking let her somehow find out. So whatever. That was that. We had sex. Kept in contact over the years. We're actually again. Uh, I feel terrible she listens to this, but I, I still love you. I still love you, Eileen. Um, no, I'm kidding. Okay, I'm uh, Did you... Uh, <clears throat> oof. That's not her real name, right? No. Nah. Okay, good. But, but uh, or is it? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so, fucking... Uh, so, whatever, dude. Uh, years pass. Years and years. Like, five, five, I believe. 2015. Yes. And so, one day, she hits me up, and she's like, hey, are you still looking for a couch potato? Ha, ha. Like, joking, because I was always like, yeah, come be a couch potato. But... Um, we didn't necessarily discuss how long she would come over. It was just like in the spur of the moment, like, let's have sex kind of deal, right? So she fucking randomly was like, hey, I have some vacation days. I want to come out to California. Right on. I'm like, yeah, whenever you want. She's like, how about tomorrow, 7 p.m., LOL. I'm like, fucking ha ha, let's do it again. I live for chaos. Let's do this, brother. <laughs> so I fucking pick her up at the airport. We have sex. Right on. Um, vaginal. We, yes, vaginal. Okay. And it was good. It was, it was awesome sex. She's hot, right? But then, like, a day passes, and then another day, and then another day, and another day. You mean she's still at your place? She's still at my fucking place, and I'm like... Oh. She's trying to get those squatters right. After well, 30 yeah. days. We didn't discuss. Doesn't, after 30 days of staying in somebody's house, you yeah. now have squatters rights, and they have to formally evict you, yeah. and you have 30 days to vacate after that. Yeah, we, we didn't discuss, like, That's how happened. long she was going to be here. All I did was say, it's, it's stupid of me, right? So, th- honestly, this is partially my fault. And I, and I admit it, right? Just like fucking Louis C.K. admitted to beating off in front of girls is not right, right? What I should have done was said, stay here for two or three days. But instead I said, stay as long as you want, which makes me anti-commitment Justin, anti Justin very scared. So like days pass, shampoo bottles start fucking unfolding into my shower. Makeup starts unfolding on my desk. And I'm like, what the Nest, fuck? It's nesting. You, what the fuck have I done? Yeah. It's like right? a dog <laughs> pissing on something to yes. mark their territory. Girls leave so, She's moving in. Oh, yeah. She's, she's, she's deep inside so, you. So a couple days pass, and I'm training at the gym, and I'm like, ha-ha. They're like, how's life? I always have something, right? Crazy. But you got to put a positive spin on it. So I'm like, oh, fuck, man. Uh, yeah, this girl's still at my place, and everyone's making fun of me. Like, ha-ha, when, when's the wedding? And I'm like, leave me alone. Leave me. So days and days pass, and honestly... In hindsight, right, I could tell the story super fucked up, but I'm still her friend, so I'll tell it on both ends. There's two sides to every story, right? I just, I fucking panicked, and I didn't have the balls to tell her that she had to leave. So I was like, fuck, man, like, how do I do this? Uh, so, like, another couple days passed, and she doesn't even, any signs of leaving. Like, oh, I love California. Like, what the fuck? And I'm also not necessarily in a relationship with this girl in LA, but I'm, I'm seeing her and kind of mm-hmm. lying to her about like her not knowing that this girl's going to be in town, like, you know, staying in my fucking place. So dude, it got weird. It got to a point when I wasn't even having sex with her anymore. Cause I was trying to get her to get the hint. Like, I, I, I'm sorry. Like I got commitment issues. It's fucking weird. Like, how many, so how many days are we up to right now? Um, we're at about two weeks, right? Two weeks. Yeah. She's at your fucking house. Yeah. So about two weeks and then a couple more days pass and it's turning into like three and I'm like, I'm fucking losing my goddamn mind like i'm losing my mind like i cannot go anywhere without telling everybody except for her i've got this fucking person in my house and i can't take it yeah. right and so um I, I go out with one of my buddies uh my buddy kasiki mark kasiki a little fucking short he's the only guy i've ever known that's like shorter than me and i i push all my insecurities off on him like hey there fucking midget i date you if you were taller there fucking mark ha 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 right how does it feel but uh so whatever dude i go out for beers with this dude and he, uh, he tells me, I'm going to stop by, bro. I'm in the neighborhood. I said, cool, but I don't know if you can stay the night. I've got this girl staying, and I, I don't have the balls to tell her to leave. And, he, and so we start drinking. And by the time we get drunker and drunker, he starts laughing. And he's like, dude, I know how we can do this. This is the plan. This is the plan, brother. It's going to be fucking awesome. And we're obviously, we're, we're having drinks. And I'm not drunk, uh, but, but I'm buzzed, and I'm having a blast. And so he ends up saying, here's what we'll do. We'll walk in and... Somehow, some way, I sleep with her, and the next day you act furious, and then you get her out, and we're laughing. We're like, "This is gonna work, bro." So we're laughing, but it's it's all like theory. Like it's a stupid idea. There's no way this shit's gonna work. So we're laughing, and we're walking into my apartment, this and is, I open this the door. Is terrible. By oh, I know, the way. I know. So I Did open this really the door. Go down. I swear to God, 
So I open the door and we're like joking and she's there and she's having uh, drinks with my roommate and they're like all settled in. He loves her and vice versa. Like they're friends. And I'm like, fuck, Wait, man. you have a roommate during this, this yes. point too? Yes, I do. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I'm surprised the roommate wasn't like, hey, bro, can you get this fucking girl out of the house? Uh, no, he was cool. I would have. Cool. I would have. I would have sure. too. I would have actually done it for you. No, but they're friends. Couldn't. They're friends. Somehow they became friends. I mean, they fucking live together. Remember? So, oh, God. so, uh, so this we, roommate was a man or a woman? A man. And that you fucker, what's up? Hold you on, fucker? hold the fuck on. Okay, so <laughs> get out of my backswing. Yeah, bitch. so so we're walking, and me and my friend are kind of joking about how are we gonna set it up, man? We could say, and it's all a joke. And I open the door, and she's there having wine with my roommate. And I just fucking look at him, and he looks at me, and gets all awkward because we're just talking about her. And I just walk up, and I'm like, "What's up?" She's like, "Hey, what's going on?" And I'm like, "Okay, look, I've been seeing someone in L.A. I've been lying to her for the last fucking three weeks. I'm gonna go spend the night with her. Okay, fucking, it is what it is." Just tell her just like that. And then she says, fine, but I'm going to grab Mark and we're going to go to the hot tub. And I'm like, fucking awesome. Great. Have, have a great time. He's too drunk to drive. So, I mean, he's staying with me. Fucking, it is what it is. And she's like, whatever. You can't get mad if I take him to the hot tub. I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely not. Bye. So I drive up to LA, stay at this girl's house. I'm driving back in the morning and I get a text from my buddy, Mark Kosicki. And the text says, hey, guess what I did last weekend? And I'm like, ha ha, lol, what? Or I'm sorry, guess what I did last night? And I'm like, haha, what? And he's like, I've got some, uh, I'll just say it, whatever. No, I don't want to say her race. I'll just say Mexican. I've got some Mexican chick living with me. Or I banged some Mexican chick last night, dot, dot, dot. And she doesn't live with me. Ha, 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 ha. And I'm like, fucking, yeah, great. And then he's like, sorry, bro, we banged on your bed. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. So I get back. And again, I don't have the balls to tell her that she's got to leave. But I walk in and she's just acting like nothing happened. I'm like, I can't believe you fucked Mark. And she's like, okay, calm down. Blah. And she starts trying to argue me. I was like, whatever, dude, when are you leaving? When are you leaving? And she's like, I'll fucking be out of here in a couple days. Calm down. You need to buy a flight. And so she buys a flight. And, uh, I come back a couple days later and all of her shit's gone, right? I walk in and I just tiptoe in and I'm like, oh my God, like it's so fucked up, right? Again, I just didn't have the communication skills to be like, at the time, now I'm different, to be like, hey dude, you've been here three weeks, like when the fuck are you leaving? Instead, I came up with some super divisive plan and I got my friend to sleep with her and he did on my bed and she was even justifying it when I'm like, I can't believe you fucked Mark. She's like, I washed your sheets, like trying to make it not that big of a deal, but yeah, but that's a big deal. I mean, but, do, but <laughs> we're still, your sheets. but what's funny about all this is we're actually like, as time passed, we're friends again and it's been like a, Hey, like a nudge, like, how have you been? Right? Have you fucked her since? Uh, no, we, we haven't seen each other since. And, uh, this is my public apology. My bad. Let's, uh, here's what we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to fly this woman out here. Yes. Have her on the oh, show. She's going to stay at the beach house. She'd probably yep. be down actually for six months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck. She, she's a fucking, uh, an awesome chick. This story fell on me. Like I could have, I could have told the story completely different. Been like this fucking chick was living here, but the, you know, as a girl or a dude, if you've overextended your welcome, we were like, all right, cool. It's time to get the fuck. I don't out feel of here comfortable now. taking up too much space in a hallway when people are trying to get by. There's no way I would stay in someone's house for like that. If something else was like, there's no way. Yeah. It's but I, I feel like some people don't notice. I, I do too. And it's, like people, people in, at like in public places, restaurants, movie theaters, wherever the fuck you are, yeah, that will just they'll stand and have their little mini conversation for ten, fifteen, thirty seconds, blocking the lane. I would never do that, and I fucking hate those people. Yeah, I don't know if it's like the military thing. Have uh, you ever been on ship? No, Dude, no. Those those that hallways would, are like yeah, it's like a little bit wider than I am, and you have like thousands of people living on this motherfucker, and you have like. You can't walk straight down a hallway. Make a hole. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, right? And so there's like... Is there a lot of fights? Um, there's some. I would imagine, because you're just... But it's cool, but it's cool. Like people, you're too, you're, It's too small. You're too but people cramped, back right? up, and they're like, do your, handle your shit. You're on a fucking boat with these motherfuckers, right? Yeah. And there's no space, but, but you're talking about the hallway thing. Um, there's like seven hot chicks on the whole... No, no, no. Fucking, I take that back. There's like seven chicks on the entire ship of like 3,000 motherfuckers, right? And as months pass... You know, there's some that really started to look fucking hot. Yeah. And there was one, her name was uh, Anderson. And she's, you know, at, after a couple months, she's smoking. And, <laughs> dude, we're all standing in the line, and you have to stand with your back uh, to the wall as you're waiting for chow or food or whatever. And I'll never forget this trick. I will always use this trick now on my friends to make them bulge. If, if, and it'll make sense in a minute. So 
uh, she walks by and everybody shuts up when she walks by. Like, there she goes. Yeah. There she goes again. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> she's walking by. And right as she walks right in front of me and we're all quiet, my buddy next to me takes his thumb and shoves it in my ass, dude. So think about that. It oh, sounds fucked up. God. It sounds weird. It sounds Wait. weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What were you wearing? <laughs> Uh, nothing. No, I'm kidding. No, my, my fucking uniform, my camis. You're, so how does he put... He just takes his thumb and like jams it in my butt. Oh, not actually no, into no, your anus. Yeah, no, okay. yeah. To I clarify, see. for the audience. Thought, yes. For the audience. Yeah, for the okay. pants. Did yeah. You, yeah. Were you visualizing the guy with his thumb actually inside of him? Inside your anus. That's okay, what no, I thought. Yeah, yeah, no, okay, yeah. I, should, okay. I could probably tell the story a little different, but <laughs> no, brother. <it's> <laughs> anyway, so he fucking puts his thumb in my ass right as she walks in front of me. What does that make another man do? Am I just going to sit there and like thrust into his finger? Fuck no. Yeah. And I mean, he puts it and I'm like, what the hell? And I lunge forward with just my crotch. So as right as she walks past me, I'm like, and I like stick my crotch towards her. Think about it. It looks like I'm just fucking trying to rub my dick on no, her. That's, yeah, that's, being the, an asshole. that's yeah. the best pickup line ever. If you just walk up to a woman, don't say shit, but make a grunting noise and thrust your <gasps> crotch. In. It oh, works oh, yeah. every oh, single time. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. uh, so what'd she say? What was her reaction? She just gave me the fucking Did you fuck her look. later? No, Probably definitely not. not. Never point. spoke yeah. again. Like every yeah. time I'd see her, she'd give me this cringy look. Like, can you imagine being one of the seven women on that fucking no. god awful fucking? Oh, one Jesus got pregnant. Christ. One got pregnant. Of in the middle of deployment, and Here, she was and she was married, and but, she got she got oof. pregnant in the middle of deployment, oof. right? Eight month deployment, and had to be flown home. And how do you explain that one? Holy shit! Like, hey, uh, I'm gonna be on disability for a while because of this fucking baby. Yeah, because of the war. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like what? No, those things don't add up. I don't. I don't know how you would do it. I, I don't know how. You could be married at home, right? Just like a, a fucking normal dude, like a civilian guy. Have your girl be on a ship with 3,000 fucking dudes. Yeah. And then just be what cool if with that. My, the bigger, that's, that would be tough, yeah, for sure. Military the, is like, military the, people cheat on each other all the time. Oh, yeah. It is what it is, right? I mean, so there's some really good dudes out there that don't do it. And there's some yeah. really good females out there that don't do it. But the vast majority is just very... It's almost like military culture. Like, oh, yeah, it's, it doesn't mean anything. It's you like that you. whole... Zip, if you're in a different zip code kind of situation or area code or whatever it is. Yeah, but... But I, it's like extreme measures. Cause it's I for, would assume on a boat, yeah. right? Where you can't go anywhere. Yeah. Unless if it's you're listening... It's gotta be... Unless if you're listening to the show and you're in the military, it, it wasn't your wife and your husband. Sure, of course. Yeah, yeah, for of sure. course. For sure, uh, for sure brother. Obviously. <laughs> Everyone except for you. When you know, you know. When you know, you know. <laughs> but I, I would imagine... Like, if there's seven girls on one fucking boat. There might have been more. There's probably seven that. Pff, that whatever. you ran into on a regular basis. Yeah. yeah. Um, can you imagine, though, if you were one of those women and you weren't sexually promiscuous, that this wasn't your jam, you were into something else, but you're, you have to walk up and down the hallways to do your job every single day. You live your entire life for four <laughs> to six months in this, the worst there's possible no environment yeah. Yeah. for a fucking female human being to be in. I, I would love to hear some of those stories. Oh, for, oh, from the woman's side. Yeah, I bet it's fucking crazy, yeah. right? Are all of be. them sexually promiscuous? I, I don't know. I honestly didn't talk to any of them at all. A lot of women no. in the military, and I think it's because women who join the military typically are more alpha and have probably they probably have more testosterone. Like women with deeper voices and that are uh, that have broader shoulders will be. This is a good way to spot someone that will definitely fuck you. If a woman has a deeper voice than you think she should. Check for an Adam's apple. And if there's not one, that woman will fuck you. I guarantee it. <laughs> she has, I, don't, I don't know the world works that way, Dan. No, it definitely know. does. Maybe not you if you're a fucking a turd or something. But if you're a normal dude that can get your dick wet in other ways, yeah. that woman is someone. Like if you're just at the bar in the middle of the night, right? It's, it's, it's not too late. It's not the 2 o'clock curtain call where you're waiting for some uh, fatty to come out. But this woman's, you know, five foot eight. Uh, 170 maybe 160 170 he's got a little broad shoulders talks a little deeper she will have sex with you for how sure do you, how do you keep it private on a boat how do you like that you, tv did this if you're gonna bone one of those chicks right and i'm assuming somebody was fucking these girls right yeah how do you keep it private on a ship that is that small where it's just like where, oh where do people you go know people know they start walking around together yeah and they start walking around and then like 
a phase passes where they're no longer together and there's all these rumors on shit where we're like, oh, dude, she's single for sure. And you see the guy always all angry. And then like a couple days later, she's always with another motherfucker. And we're like, cocksucker. Oh, is, is there any man. advantage to keeping people on a boat angry that long? I feel no. like they should have prostitutes in there. Well, honestly. Yeah. Or I mean, something. Or like, bring, seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, like, then, then we end up stopping in ports, right? And, and you stop and they're full of prostitutes. Not that I've yeah. ever done one. You know, ever in my life. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's fucking crazy. Dude. Yeah, because you've never paid for sex, right? No. No. Yeah. No, not one single time. Not no. over not over 40, for sure. No, yeah. definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Weird flex, Dan. Weird fucking flex, brother. So when you get off and you pour, how, how, how long do you typically have? Oh, uh, man. Is it like five, a they gave us like five days. Labo? Oh, shit, five days. That's enough time to get we went to Guam, shit. Yeah, Singapore. Yeah, you, can you can go through an entire conspiracy. Within five days. Hawaii, yeah. Australia. Yeah. Dude, when I went to Guam, uh, we were only there, I think, was it? No. Is there any prostitutes in Guam? Yeah, there's a ton. There's every, all these ports, man. Like, girls aren't... The, the women there that are... Hookers. Okay, fine. Not women are dumb. Women are not dumb. But hookers definitely are not dumb. Right? And they know how to get there. So they're like, well, there's a military port here. Think about it. In terms of just straight marketing, like, if you were to pull back on a marketing plan and be like, where's our... Our target demographic be like where all these ports are, where all these men never get to fuck. Imagine if you were an entrepreneurial young woman on the ship. Yeah. Yeah. Just fuck, go like a hundred bucks a pop bank, two dudes a day for six months. You, you be, could probably do that, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Or would, sure. they, would they find out about it and be like, hey, some, I'm going to make some extra cash. Like, somebody would find out. But, somebody but, uh, would find out, but you could make enough money in the meantime. Dude, when I went to Guam, I met some beautiful girl, gal. Right, Prosty or no? No, no, no. Regular girl. Okay. Um, and we were walking back to the, the boat, mm -hmm. and we had to be there at, what, 10? I don't remember what time, but we had to be there at a certain time. But the last shuttle ran a couple hours prior. So with that said, uh, I'm walking because we got to hit the bus, but we had like a three-hour gap or something after that, two- or three-hour gap. Then we had to actually be there, but there's no means to get there, and we didn't have Uber. It was 2007. So... You know, we stop at port. I'm walking and I see some girl and she's eating ice cream. She's so hot. And I look at her and I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, just bored, eating ice cream. I'm like, you want to be bored and eat ice cream together? And she's like, sure. I'm like, boom, I can't believe this worked. But I've got like 40 minutes to I got to be somewhere. So we're hanging out. And then I end up telling her, hey, I really want to continue hanging out, but I got to get back. I'm going to get in trouble if I don't. And she's like, well, I could just give you a ride. That'll buy us time. Oh, perfect. So I'm with my buddy Juanito Castillo, right? <clears throat> and, Juanito? Uh, his name was uh, Juan or Castillo, but we call him Juanito. Okay. What, why? What does that mean? He was, uh, he was from Mexico, like legitimately from Mexico, and had okay. a fight for his fucking citizenship. Fucked up, right? Like after serving, like, you mean, yeah. Had been through, he was uh, after his third combat deployment, and people were still promising him, like, we're working on your documents, you know, and he's like, motherfucker, I've been to war three times for you, like, fix this shit. Yeah. But anyway, we all, he was from Mexico, so we'd always be like, hey, fuck you, Juanito, or. There's ever, what does like, Juanito mean? That's his, his name was Juan. Tiny Juan. Juan. Yeah. So, and he was actually about my size. So is yeah, that what that means? Little Juan. If you put Ito at the end of yeah. something in Spanish, yeah. it means small. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Poquito. Poquito, your little penis. Dude. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> we're, we're on our way back to the, to the boat, and I meet this girl, mm. and she says, I'll just give you a ride. I'm like, all right, right on. And uh, dude, she ends up driving, and she says, like, you want to pull over on the beach and like hang out or talk? And I'm like, oh, fuck yes. There's no way. I just met this girl. And so we pull over on the beach and then she's like, you want to talk? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, and she looks at me and she smiles. And I look back at my friend Juanito. I'm like, Hey, uh, Juanito, get out. We're going to talk. He's like, Oh no, you're good, man. And he talked like that too. He's like, Oh no, man, you're good, dude. You're good. And I'm like, no, no, <laughs> no cheat. No. I'm going to bang this yeah. girl. Yeah, we're yeah, gonna, yeah. I'm like, we're going to talk, man. He's like, no, no, dude, we're good. We're good. I'm like, dude, get the fuck out of the car. And he's like, Oh, boom. And he closes the door and he literally leans on the vehicle and I end up having sex with her. And, uh, as no, was he protecting you, or he just wanted to hear you bang? I honestly cannot answer that. <laughs> I would love to have him on the show. Be like, what was going through your show. head? Were you beating yeah. up? I don't know. But I remember I had tattoos on my chest, and I was like, I have tattoos. Don't lift my shirt. She's like, I love tattoos. I was like the line of the sex, right? So hot. This was, again, pre-fucked like fucked up Justin, right? Um, and so was this? This was before my second trip to Iraq, so whatever. She takes, takes my shirt up. Um, we, we finish. 
I, I threw the rubber on the beach, so it's fucking disgusting. There's probably a pregnant seagull out I there like somewhere. I like how that's what you feel bad about. Yeah, I do. It's, it's, it's pollution. <laughs> yeah. I do. I literally. I fucked this I prostitute, bad. but then I littered afterwards. Yeah, and I felt She wasn't a prostitute. Bad, <laughs> She's a normal girl. So uh, mm. to further the story, we hop back in, and we're driving back to the base, and we don't have a lot of time to get there. Does Juanino get back into the car? Yeah, he's back in the car. Okay. So we get to the, the military base, and she has the stickers, the credentials to get onto base. Now I'm wondering, fucking A, how does she have these stickers? Is she someone's daughter? Is she married? Oh, I go. don't know. Here right? we go. Here we go. So the military, um, you know, the MPs at the gate are like, all right, li- show me your license. And she's like, I don't have it on me. He's like, why don't you have your license? You have a sticker to get onto base. Where's your license? And she gives whatever excuse. And do we have like minutes to be back to the boat? And so the MPs scrape her sticker off with a razor and they send her away. And I'm like, no, no, you can't drop us off. Like, I need to get to that fucking boat. It's like, I could see it. It's like miles away, but I could fucking see it. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm like, we got to go. And they're like, you stay here, you two. Show us your military ID. I'm like, dude, if you're late 30 seconds to a formation in the Marine Corps, you're done. You're fucking done. They will take your rank away. I'm not even joking, right? And so I'm shitting my pants. And I'm Especially doing, on a port call. Shit. Yeah, dude. Because the boat leaves at this fucking time. And yeah. people missed, right? People missed. And they had to get private boats to get them back <laughs> To the fucking boat, and they had, climb, they had to climb. They had to climb a ladder, man. hop back on a ship, and they took their fucking ranks away, and still made them go to the war. Right? It's funny though. That's that's a story. And those people fuck. that missed the boat said, "Dude, I was blacked out. I woke up in a field, and I was like, what the fuck? Oh, I gotta get back. I gotta get back.'" And they ran back, and the boat was already gone. And they're like, "Shit!" And they found the military officers, and were like, "I need to get on that boat." And so they're like, "I got you, buddy." And they hop them on the boat, and then they're like, "You a and go to the war, but we're taking your rank and gonna shit on you." Right? Sucks. So I didn't want to be that guy. So. Um, the fucking MPs eventually are like, well, you know, you're not going anywhere. I'm like, dude, I need to get on that boat. And they're kind of like, ch- like smirking. And eventually they're like, you think you can make it to that boat in 20 minutes? And it's miles away, dude. I could fucking see it. And I'm like, yes. But again, I was a sniper and so was Juanito. And we're like, you give me a timeline. I will fucking 1000% get there. That's my mentality. There's no failing. You fail, you die. Right? So I'm staring at the, at the boat. And I look at Juan and he's like, you think you can make it back in 20 minutes or 19, whatever the fuck time we have left. And I'm like, yes, but we had packs full of stuff. You know what I mean? Which yeah. weighs us down and we're both in jeans. Right. And so they're like, do you think, you think you'll make it go? And I'm like, you're not going to shoot us. No. And so we start sprinting and I'm talking like in the military, everything you do is like a ruck run and like Double there's time. time yeah. There's time hacks, but this was a legitimate, like, like, dude, I went back to being in my, uh, in doc. Like when you're trying to be a sniper, they're like, if you don't make it in this amount of time, you're going to run the whole six miles again. And they fucking mean it. If you're late 30 seconds, they're like, guess what you're doing? Running another six miles with a pack on. And you're like, fucking, but you do it. You don't have a choice. So I'm staring at that boat and that's my motivation. And dude, me and this dude are running through creeks and we're getting like wet. We have like mud all over us and, uh, we make it to the fucking gate and everybody, they said, you will be here at midnight on the dot in fucking uniform, right? And me and my buddy made it in with seconds, and they had the whole formation already going. And again, if you're late, just one minute, you're, you're, tra- you're done, dude. And so me and him ran, and we, they are like, hurry the fuck up, governor Juanito. And we're not even in our uniform. Everybody else is in our uniform. And I run up, and right as my chief scout, uh, Yurik, was like, hey, you fucking piece of shit, blah, blah. He starts scolding me, dude. Right, and I'm hammered, by the way. Right, so as soon as he's he's uh, scolding me, the first sergeant comes up and he's like, "Company, oh, ten, huh, like," whoosh, and we all lock up, and I'm in fucking civilian clothing, which isn't as bad. I got my ass chewed, but you're not missing. You got to be sweating your ass. Yeah, off, oh, dude, too. I'm sweating. I'm full of mud and fucking water. And like booze. I've got fucking, I've got cum dick. You know, like yeah, I got p- fucking latex around my penis still. Yeah, and so. I'm standing there and my chief scout is next to me and he's like mumbling like you're gonna fucking die governor like you're done and I'm so hammered at position of attention I'm like talking out of the side of my mouth I'm like just had sex I'm hammered don't give a fuck you're like, don't give a fuck and he's like you're fucking done right um but dude we didn't get in trouble it, it turned into like military base like it's just such a great fucking story for me. it was a win dude like yeah. I made it down to the last second and I love chaos and so that adrenaline rush of just running, like, I'm going to be late after I just banged, and I'm drunk, and I'm covered in mud. I, I feel like, uh, do you remember that line from, uh, from Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas where he's talking about, our, we've gone so far now, we've done so much fucked up shit that our only hope is that we've gotten so fucked up that no one in the position to bring the hammer down on us would actually believe it happened. Right. And I feel like, I seriously oh, feel like, life. welcome to my life. I, feel, I seriously feel like in the military, if, if what happened was fucking crazy enough 
everybody's just like, holy shit. Yeah. And then they help you. Yeah. Like, so this one, I'm not going to say any names, but these two guys right before uh, Jared and I deployed um, were shooting some old computers with fully automatic AK-47s behind a fucking bank. Like, this is a week or so before we're about to deploy. <laughs> like, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing, man? It's so fucking loud. I'm, I'm sure. Oh, the yeah, cops they were, were not suppressed. Like and it's a fully automatic AK-47, which is a very distinctive sound. Yeah. Like, most of the cops in the Fayetteville area served at some point, probably. So they know that sound. They're like, what the fuck is right. happening here? The guy got charged with all kinds of shit. The guy that, was, that actually owned the weapon. Like, having a legal weapon. Uh, I, they, they actually charged him with something called possessing a weapon of mass death and destruction. That's what they said. And my, my commander, Will Kanda, who's actually a fucking colonel in the army now, he's super legit dude, best commander I ever had, uh, he, he went to the judge. He was like, look, man, we're deploying. And we just got called up on DRF-1. We're done. We're, we're leaving in two days. I can't have this shit. And they, it just went away. And he never faced any punitive action. Really? Anyway, yep. <laughs> so you got to shoot up the computers and just call yeah, it a day. Yeah, but there was some other bullshit about him. Before he was in the Army, we were looking at his record one time, and he had been accused of poisoning like a water reservoir or some shit like that. Jesus so he had Christ. A, he had a history of doing crazy shit, and he was so, like the first day I showed up to the unit, and I told you on an earlier episode, like two months ago maybe, about a uh, month and a half maybe, about... Kingfish, this guy that was in my unit, yeah, that shit his shit yeah, yeah, himself yeah. in the fucking PX. Um, God damn it, dude! So much fucked up shit happens that it's hard to get your brain around it. Sometimes it really <laughs> is. Um, hang on, hang on a sec. Yeah, you can see you taking a sip for this one. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Are you taking a shot for this one? It's it's vodka. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because we're, we're back to old school shit. Just getting, I've been drinking for rocks. two hours now. At any, at any rate, yeah. um, I don't even remember what I was talking about. What, was it, what were we talking about before? Uh, shit, the guy who shit his pants. Yeah, but what were we talking about before that? Kingfish, uh, story, shooting computers, looked up his record, polluted a water reservoir. <sighs> I like that you're this trash. That you're, I am. You're I'm off a little the, drunk. <laughs> at least I'm not yelling into the microphone this time. But I am super <laughs> drunk. Uh, we've been drunk for three days now. Days, days. Days at this point. I totally whiffed on that story, though. So That's fine. Let's just move on. It, it, it'd be a perfect chance to get into the sponsors uh, while we're here. Uh, speaking of which, our chief sponsor for the year is ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Get yourself a mattress. Uh, you can do it at an unbelievable discount, too. If you're military or first responder... 15% off forever. Scroll down to the bottom of the page and, uh, and get a fucking 15% off forever, man. Mattresses, pillows, you name it. Uh, if you're a regular human like myself, um, those bundle packages are still going. Yeah. I can't believe it. <coughs> I'm they, actually they, really shocked. They keep those sales going for a very long time. No, man. Uh, the 4th of July sale, I think, is still up. They're always giving away free shit. I don't know what it is this month. Last month, it was the cooling cover. The month before, it was free sheets month before that is free pillows uh if you haven't tried the pillows they're just as, as great as the goddamn mattresses and as always 36 months pay as you go no interest uh, at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros um man love these guys more than life itself and uh they're my faves yeah we're, uh, we're beef fries with those guys i just got uh two my fucking child is now moving on to, you know, out of a kid bed into. So he's in a race car bed, but it's a ghost bed now. No. It, it, we, yeah, he was in a race car bed. Now he's into like a bunk bed. So we oh. just got two uh, twin mattresses. Did you get, are those. you future proofing there? You got a bunk bed because the other kid at some point you're going to try to throw him in the same room or what? No, but, but I think it's one of those things. And I don't know because the other one's too young, but I'm sure yeah. they want to go and sleep with his older brother and, you know. Yeah. Uh, or have sleepovers and all that shit. So, dude, you try to fucking transition out of it and uh, get him into that ghost bed early. Yeah. Uh, the only problem is if he ends up being some fucking dummy. And again, this is why I'm trying as hard as I can in this life to bribe him into a goddamn college. Yep. Like Aunt Becky from Full House. But if I can't, and he, let's say you know he can't afford a ghost bed one day. And it's kind of like a ruin his life. It is. Yeah, you set him up for failure that way. But you know what? You can't predict shit like that. You can't. So you give them a ghost bed and say, hey, work hard so you can keep having ghost beds. Uh, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Next up 
It's the boner pill. I was going to say, speaking of working hard, uh, these pills will save your life. I, I love the commercial that the guy. So apparently the company was started by this dude. And his Is he dad, Roman? No. Yeah. I don't know why they call it that, honestly. Yeah, it's, it it's, doesn't it's, really it's Roman ED. It's getroman.com forward slash drinking, drinking bros. bros. Yep. Um, that's where you can get your boner pills yep. discreet, sent to your house, unmarked boxes. Kids won't know, wife won't know, mistress won't know. I highly recommend them. Yeah. That way you're not going to your doctor saying, hey, doc, I got a limp dick. Can you help me? Well, who's got time for that shit? Who's got time for it? The other thing, dude, I don't, I don't like uh, Viagra. I'm not a fan of Viagra. Headache, man. Yeah, they give, they give me a headache. Uh, these don't at all. No, no. Uh, so look, if you if you want to get rock hard and just even just party with your wife yeah. for the weekend or, or lady, they, they gave me a headache, but only because the girls wouldn't want to stop coming back. They kept calling me. They're like, "Your dick's so hard, Roman pills." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go, uh, yeah. Come back. Justin, so I was like, I've got you. a headache. She doesn't go away. Justin, I love but you. But it wasn't a side effect. Yeah. So maybe, I mean, look, that, maybe that's the problem with me. Maybe that's why I keep ending up with these fucking absolute psychopaths. Yeah. Because my dick is like fucking just so hard that it's about to pop out of its own skin. <laughs> 24 hours a day. Yeah. And then it's like. Even right now. God damn. Yeah, I know. He's, he touched damn. it a minute ago. Yeah, you did. You get a little breeze by. I did. So there are there are consequences that come with this kind of shit. Yeah, it's a, you're an adult. Be responsible. Be responsible, but you know, get ready for those fake pregnancies, though. Yeah, so yeah. Get ready to have a boner. Uh, you you gave the old. Uh, do you have mustard on your pants? And then you kind of wiped it off, and yeah, you were just well, touching that, his like, Oops! How and clumsy of me. That's yeah. all it takes to get me hard, too. Just like a little a, a breeze. Breeze. Breeze comes in and slaps my dick up against my thigh, and I'm like, holy shit! Whoop. That, that's like what that. happens at GetRoman.com forward slash drinking bros. It, dude, the, they're rad just to party on. I'm just be fucking real. Um, I don't know. Are they cool with me saying that? Who fucking knows? Yeah, um, that's. But it look, is. Uh, uh, you pop in a boner pill and have a great time. Yeah, why would you not do that? There's no law that says you can't use these recreationally. Yeah, you're goddamn right. Like, what, what does it mean to have erectile dysfunction? My dick is not working like I want it to. <laughs> I want it to be so hard. At this minute. I want it to be so hard that someone may get injured. <laughs> For real. That's what I want. And I feel like as a, you know, a human being in America right now, I sh- I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm entitled to that so long as I'm willing to pay for it. And it's not even that expensive. So no. why the fuck would I not do that? Let's I, show. I fought for your right to injure someone during sex. Yes. Yeah. He did. Yeah. You, you fought f- for the right to, to, for his boner. Yeah. yeah. So WMDs never found him, but Dan's boner <laughs> easily Bring found him, brother. Yeah. <laughs> in, in, in North Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> uh, go to getroman.com forward slash drinking bros today. Get your fucking boner pills uh, at a discount. Uh, last but not least, expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros. Dan, tell us about you it. You got to stay away from these people trying to steal your information. Yes. They're out there. They're lurking in the shadows. ExpressVPN is a stiff arm. Yeah. Right, it's a lead blocker. Yeah, if you're a football fan, protect your dick Keep, pics. Yep. Keeps that you don't want it. You don't want your dick pics leaking. You don't want your banking information leaking. Uh, you don't want the fact that you've been texting this girl or DMing this girl on Instagram for the last two years and she's never responded to you. You don't want that leaking. You you really don't. And if you're if you're out there trying to yeah. protect your dick pics or vag pics. Um, or tit picks. Or butthole yeah. picks. I'm glad that I, Hillary did not know about them. Because exactly. Yeah. hi She outcome. would have them. Yeah. Uh, go to expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros. Seven bucks a month. Uh, it's just a, an app that runs seamlessly uh, in the background of your computer, laptop, tablet, iPhones, all that other shit. And uh, with, with uh, the, the, the URL, uh, expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros, you get three free months. It's only seven bucks a month. 70 yeah. bucks a year all your shit's safe you're good to go speaking of that man um have you are you a big dick pic guy uh like receiving them uh, i don't know no i'm kidding <laughs> no uh here's no. the thing i i'll send dick pics religiously right is it your dick or other people's other dicks? people's dicks because i find it fucking hilarious yeah it's funny right? so i used to send my own but before yeah yeah pre-marriage and all that other shit like yep. i used to send my own all the time I would say it was 90-10. It was mostly my bros that I was sending them to. Yep. And I would either cut, oh, like, yeah. cut holes in paper plates and then write messages on them around the plate. Or I'd, you know, uh, dick and balls with a uh, yeah. cigarette. Put a cigarette between my shaft and my yeah, balls. Like, and then some Like you put out the cigarette on, on your cock. Like, uh, no, never no, that level. Oh, same, um, same. But yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I'm not, I don't. 
girls don't want dick pics, dude. It's fucking 2019. What girl is like, like occasionally someone will be like, send me a picture of your dick. And you're like, LOL, no. Like why? Every dick looks the same. And every time I tell that to, to females, they're like, oh my God, no, it doesn't. And I'm like, okay, well, I've seen a lot of dick in my day in the Marine Corps. Yeah. And they there are a whole lot of women who have seen as many dicks as you have. Yeah. yeah are you cirked? Uh, yeah. Fuck yeah. Okay, cool. Good. You know, dude, dude, some people aren't. Some cirked. people aren't. And that's fine. You know, like it's, it wasn't their choice. Uh, but dude, in terms of sending dick pics, um, uh, I mean, I only really have sent them. It was either before age 25 or to my buddies. Right. And I remember the only time I've, uh, that I can recall like sending one was Afghanistan 2010. They blocked all the porn sites. And, uh, I don't know, man, I had MSN messenger and I somehow met some girl on there and I'm like, I'm pretty sure this might be a catfish. I'm also pretty sure this is my only chance of seeing naked women right now. Right. Right. And so, uh, <laughs> why don't they block the porn sites, by the way? I don't know. It's called a sad zone. No sex, no alcohol, no drugs. Yeah. Oof, I don't know why the zone. fuck that, that happened. I don't either, man. I don't think uh, crazy pumped up on testosterone raging lunatics is better than thoughtful warriors, honestly. Yeah. I think like there should be entire uh, companies of prostitutes attached to every infantry unit everywhere. Yeah. Sure, sure. On deployment. It's like, no shit. <laughs> sure. I'm not even kidding. It. It, 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 it. None of it, it doesn't make any sense to me. God damn it. That boner pill must be working. <laughs> oh, fucking A. Well, I took four so, of them, so. Yeah. So, uh, I meet this girl, and she starts sending me, like, photos of her. And she's like, you, you want more? You want more? And I'm thinking in my head. I mean, this is 2009, I believe, or 10. And this is before, like, now I'd be like, no, dude, you're fake. You're a catfish. But I rolled the dice. And she's like, send me a picture. And I'm like, okay. Mind you, I'm fucked up. So I don't just send a picture. I, like, beat off and, like, nut off over myself. And I took a photo that I had to take on, like, an actual camera and upload it to my computer and then fucking oh, send, right? That's, that's a, a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work. And then after I start getting pictures back, I'm like, I'm pretty sure this, this has got to be fake. And I, just I would have assumed it was one of my buddies, to be honest. Yeah, well, I, yeah. I, so, well, speaking of like, which, like, mm, so nah, I good. saved, I, obviously, I had that photo. And my buddy, uh, Peach. We're, we're boys, right? And he found out that I was contracting in Afghanistan. He stayed in the Marine Corps. He's still in. He's a great fucking guy, right? Talked about him a couple of times on the show. But uh, I was in a sniper tune with him. Things are great. And out of nowhere, he gets, somehow gets my email. And he's like, hey, buddy, how have you been? Blah, blah, blah. And so I send him back. He's like, I heard you're in Afghanistan. You're killing it. Congrats, brother. Blah, blah, blah. And so I send him back a picture of... <laughs> I only, the caption said, check out this super cool pic of me in Afghanistan, Right? And I, I sent him the picture of my hard cock with cum all over but my But there's throat. no thumbnail. There's so no thumbnail. Yeah, 2009, picture, right? right? Yeah, there's yeah, no yeah. thumbnail. Like, yeah. do you want to open and download this picture of your fucking best friend's cock? Right? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't say that. It's just no. like, it's just got the fucking paperclip attached. Oh, there's an attachment on here. So I'm like, hey, check out this super cool pic of me in Afghanistan. Boom. And I send it. <laughs> and then he sends me back an email. And he's like, I'm glad to see you're still a sick fuck. Uh, how old is your little sister now, man? 11, 12, <laughs> question mark. He's like, almost there, man. P.S. Does she love older men and getting fucked in the mouth? Love, peace. Right? And it was super fucking funny. And the reason why I was cracking up, because obviously he's joking, right? Like, fucked up sense of humor yeah. in the military, whatever. But I thought it was so... Uh, first of all, when we're in the Marine Corps, he would make jokes about my sister because his sister was hot. Still is. What's up? Is she single, peace? I know you listen. Anyway, so... <laughs> His sister was hot, and we'd all, like, hone in on that. And then one day he looks at me, he's like, oh, what about your sister, Governor? I'm like, hey, bro, like, she's fucking nine or ten or whatever. Uh, and he's like, yeah, man, like, ah, oh, dude. And he would, like, rub his hands together, like, if he was waiting. And it would get me pissed. And he knew this, right? So I sent him a picture of my cock, and he just goes for the low blow, fucking talks about my sister. And I'm like, you fucking cocksucker. But uh, in terms of sending dick pics, no, dude, I don't really do it. Like it's just, I'm shocked like, by that. It's dumb, dude. Like I don't really do it except for this one time when I jerked off all over myself and sent my best friend a fucking picture. Yeah, that's different. That's <laughs> sorry, different. I'm sorry. Brother. Anything for a brother. There's, there's some know. incongruity in these two stories you're telling right yeah. now. Yeah, I look, I I would get deep with it where it was just like, all right, cool, man. Like I would do the most elaborate shit I could possibly do with my dick and then send it yeah. to my friends. Like um, stirring coffee, like cold brew coffee yeah. with your dick or something. Yeah, dude, I fuck, dude. There was a guy. Somebody did that to Jared one day. There was a, so there was a buddy of mine who lived b below me when I first moved to L.A. And we'd yeah. both gone to Ohio State together. And his name was Brock. Um, I'm blanking on his last name. Lesnar? Whatever, not important. I was, the, I was that dude who always pulled his dick out and mm -hmm. just thought it was hilarious all the time. Like, Same. no matter what. Like, the most inappropriate times. And I would try to get away with it wherever I could. Where yeah. it's just like, all right, cool, Sneak man. nuts, dude. Yeah. You so, know what that is? 
What's that? You know what sneak nuts is? Like family photos and you try and like unzip your pants and just put the nutsack out. So later on when they're editing photos, they're like such a beautiful family picture and you're smiling, like hugging all your family members. <laughs> it's like that guy from Justin Teen Wolf. Balls is hanging out. Teen Wolf, yeah. Teen, like, like, they did that in Teen Wolf. Have you seen it, Teen Wolf? There was an extra in Teen Wolf. At the end of the movie, he pulls his dick out, dick and balls out, right when Michael J. Fox hits the game-winning shot and they cut to the father who's alone in the stands because all of the fans rush the floor. Oh, One fan doesn't rush the floor and if you look right next to his dad, homeboy just pulls out his, his dick and balls and it's standing right next to the dad and it's the most like touching music playing and somehow yeah, we're gonna do it one together somehow they missed it in the and edit. they missed it in, in, in the edit and yeah. it's still no, in there to this way. day yeah so my my no child way, dude. yeah so my no, child that's real dude that's was, real. was you know you see the thumbnail oh, on on amazon fuck. and it was of the the werewolf of michael j fox my my kids like i want to watch this it's rated PG. And yeah. I was like, great. So we ended no. up watching it. And then it dawned on me and I was like, man, they had to have taken it out all these years later. And they <laughs> fucking didn't, man. So I, I screenshot no it way, and, and put it up on Instagram stories. Yeah, it's awesome. So wait, it's still on like net or Amazon or Netflix? Amazon. So go on Amazon Prime. It's playing free right now. Teen Wolf is. And just fast forward to the end. To, no. to Michael J. Fox's dad. And you can see the guy just because then he zips like when they cut back the shot, he's zipping his pants real fast, too. Why did um, he do it? You see, why why would anybody see sneak, sneak, yeah. sneak nuts? Yeah. Yeah. Is the way he did it. I Hashtag sneak nuts. Sneak now. nuts, yeah. Yeah, yeah the legend. It's the, he's the best extra in movie history. So By it's, far, yeah, it's this... fucking amazing. Our producer Jamie's wincing at this. I'm assuming you're looking this up right now, Jamie. Yeah, he's staring at some dude's dick you're and welcome, balls. Right? Yeah. You're, you're not staring at this guy's dick So and when balls I send right dick pics. Yeah. Um, but so, so Brock, who lived underneath me, was one of those guys like... I showed him my dick, you know, the first time out because I was like, hey, man, um, yeah, can you just grab me like a coffee cup or something out there, you know? Mm. And I, by my point, it raised my shirt so that way my dick and yeah, balls yeah, yeah. were out, you know? And he was like, oh, man, fuck you. And, you. and you always have those, like, those one friends who are just like way over the top about, dude, I'm not fucking gay. Yes. Dude, I'm not fucking gay, dude. Don't, I don't want to see your dick, dude. Put your dick away. And I was like, oh, man, all right, cool. So obviously, that just makes you want to do it more yes. over and over and That's over That's the again. worst way you can respond. Yeah. So I, I put like, so then I started getting super elaborate with it, right? Uh, he had this one coffee mug that he would drink out of every morning. The dude was like shredded, just drank a pot, of, a full pot of coffee every morning, yep. you know? And then, because that would suppress his appetite and he'd, yep. he'd go run or whatever. So he had this one mug that was his favorite mug. So I put my dick and balls in his mug, and then I took a picture oh, of it, and, and I, I sent it to him. And, uh, but right after he drank this coffee that morning, I was like, hey, man, how was that coffee this morning? You know, did you go for a run, or what did you do afterwards? Um, and he's yeah. like, oh, man, it was great. And I was like, ah, it didn't taste uh, like dick and balls? <laughs> and I sent him the thing. He's like, man, fuck you, dude. That's my favorite cup. I had to fucking wash that shit out, man. Your fucking dick is in there. You crossed the line. You fucking crossed the line. So it got to the point where he stopped making eye contact with me when at, like parties, social Straight settings. Alpha, that motherfucker. And it, yeah. He was so worried about seeing my dick and balls. And I was like, man, I couldn't get him anymore. Like I couldn't trick the him. The trick is to maintain eye contact though. Y yeah. Like but if he, somebody, it's like magician's patter. Somebody's trying to draw your attention somewhere. Just keep looking in their eyes. Cause I had just assumed after years in the army that somebody was trying to show me their dick and balls. Yeah. All the time. Oh dude. I've, I've, yeah. I've so, so I, anyways, I, at this part, like he would either look at me in the eyes or just not look at me at all. And I was like, fuck man, how do I get him? Do you remember those Polaroid cameras that came out for a couple years where you could take the mini ones, like yeah. the mini yeah, yeah. pictures yeah. that were like this big? Mm -hmm. So I bought one of those. I took pictures of my dick all over his apartment, car. Uh, I put my, uh, I mean, I, you name it. I, I, you should have made it. That like, he owned and I put like, my dick and balls in it. You should have made a coffee table book out of all these and given it to him for his fucking birthday. But what I did was, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't because I was like, oh man, he'll he'll find like he, he won't open the book or you know yeah, whatever yeah. right so what i did was i would hide them in places that he would never think to look until it was too late so i put one inside of his gas tank you know because i knew he was he's gonna get gas yeah, in his yeah. car and so i taped it right on the thing so when he opened up the lever <laughs> boom it was my dick and balls like right there right he's like oh fuck you dude whatever uh the visor like for the mirror yeah you yeah, know? yeah it just falls into his lap or tape, you, i taped, taped it to the mirror yeah. so Right when he pulled it down, he had to look. Wait, did you tape it on the inside of the mirror? Inside like, of the mirror, correct, so it, yeah. So he had to pull it down and then flip it up to look. And then he... Yes. So, yes. And then, boom, right. dick and ball was, yep. like, everywhere, like, like on, his, on his ceiling. Like, you know, when you move into, like, 
your first apartments and all that shit, there's always glow stars or something yeah. up there. Like, boom, amongst the glow stars. But I, I put the glow stars on it so that way when it lit up, you could see, still see my dick and balls at night. Like, I mean, I went to every length possible. And, and I would say it was probably 32 photos. Um, inside, I put them back in the coffee mug. I mean, you name it, they were there. And like, that was the biggest enjoyment I ever, probably, that was probably the happiest I've ever been in my entire life, if, if you want to be real just about well, it. Well, tricking people into seeing your dick? Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, so, and I don't know what, I don't know about the Marines, but in the Army, oh, they're dude. called meat gazers, right? So you show a guy your dick and or balls, and he sees them on accident on his part, then you call him gay and call him a meat gazer. Right. <laughs> so I don't know how, I don't know why or how or what, but. There it is. There it is. Yeah. You know. Yeah. What, yeah. about what about weird tattoos? You get a bunch of weird tattoos. We were, we were trying to go uh, get tattoos last night, and I told you, I was like, hey, man, I haven't, I haven't found a cool person here yet. Um, but I was asking you what your shit means. Well, because you're, you're almost covered. Oh, uh, yeah. I got Just your right arm isn't. You don't have it. Um, I don't have any on. I mean, I've got some on my back on the upper part. I need my legs, and I still have this arm free. We were all going to go get up. American flag tramp stamp tattoos. Yeah. yeah. With the uh, uh, Betsy Ross flag, though. Yeah, yeah, with the Betsy Ross yeah. flag last Just night. for for freedom. I do well, have. Well, yeah, what, what, what was this? This one right here? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, well. <laughs> what's that, what's that well, reaction for? So, a lot of tattoos people say, what does that mean? Or you'll hear people say cliche, generic shit. Like, I really want a tattoo. I just can't find anything that means something so much to me. I'm like, dude, hashtag my body, my choice. Fuck you. Like, yeah, and, for, get, and by the way, to preface this for the audience, last night when we were out, I, I showed, I, I have the words, just the words Asian writing tattooed yeah, on my legit. ass. Like, it's real. And yeah, just those two words, Asian writing, because everybody gets Asian writing tattoos. And they don't know what they mean. Oh. And then you were like, dude, I've, yeah, got, I've one. got one. I've got one. So uh, I, I was 19 and I got this kanji on my chest and it says faith. Right. And I got it with my buddy, uh, Kyle, his tattoos. Uh, Does it re is it really mean faith? Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> so, so my buddy Kyle got a uh, grunt tattooed on his ass. We both went to San Diego together and people were telling him. Uh, or he was telling people, you don't think I'll do it? You don't think I'll get grunt on my ass? And everyone's like, Kyle, we all believe you, brother. Like, yeah. you're out of your fucking mind. He's like, you don't think I'll do it? Let's go, Governor. Let's get tattoos. So I was dating some girl that fucked my life up. I've talked about her on the show before. Uh, the one that beat the brakes off of me and fucking stabbed me with mascara or whatever. So I put faith, symbolically, uh, by my heart. Also, you're a Marine. You're out of your mind. She's fucking half Korean. And I get in Japanese. Like, it's Asian, right? That works. And so... I got faith by my heart. And then it I, looks cool, though. It looks cool, right? And I go to Japan one day. Uh, I used to travel a lot. And I stopped in Japan for 24 hours because I literally just wanted sushi in Japan because I love sushi. Yeah. So I lay over for a day on purpose. I go out. And I remember I met, like, I don't know. It was great, man. I go out and I meet some girls. And I'm talking to them. And they're talking to some fat old white guy that's a businessman. And I'm like, hey, do you speak English? Yes, we do. And then I said, cool, here's what's going to happen. Those, those guys are fucking boring. So as soon as they turn around, you're both going to grab my hand. We're going to run away and we're going to have a great night. And they're like, what are we going to do? I'm like, I don't know, but we're going to have fun because that motherfucker's boring. Let's do this. He turns. I'm like, go now. And they start laughing. He's like, where are you going? And we're running. I'm running off with these two Japanese chicks. Great. Right. They start getting uh, pretty tanked. And one girl looks at me and she says, hey, if she doesn't find anyone to go home with, would you mind taking us both home? And I'm like, yeah, and doing what? And she goes, <laughs> hook up. And I'm like, yeah, That was yeah. the least necessary yeah. question that any human <laughs> being know, has know, ever asked I know, another human but being. Bro, bro, I was like Holy 23 shit. years old, 23 or 24. So I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, and do what? And she goes, <laughs> hook up. And do my heart starts fucking racing. I'm like, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. But I'm like, oh, my God, don't fuck this up, Governor. Don't fuck this up. So uh, we go out to another bar, and homegirl, the second one, starts – fucking getting tanked and at this point this is where my experience in my couple years you know uh comes to play and i'm like oh i've been here before you're gonna get way too fucking drunk yep and you're gonna say i'm so sorry i gotta take her home i'm gonna go home i'm gonna fuck the fucking fuck out of myself right because yeah. you're too drunk and god you know what fucking i gotta i gotta be a smart man I'm, I'm a gambling man but i'm also a smart gambling man so what do i do i need to find her somebody to bang because they made it very clear that they're looking for sex that night so we're in some bar and I'm like, Hey, um, if you find somebody or if I find you someone, do you want to, you know, are you willing to leave with them? She's like, yeah, yeah. Super cool. Also the Japanese are very open. It seems like with sex, mm -hmm. right? Not like Americans. 
Um, but either way, so I look around, I'm like, which guy do you think is attractive? And there's one dude just sitting by himself drinking beer. So I'm like, I got you. I'm going to say that you said he's very handsome and I'm going to get, I'm going to feel him out and blah, blah, complete bullshit. Right. So she's like him. So I walk up and I'm like, Hey man, do you speak English? A lot of people in Japan do. So he says, yes. And I said, okay, cool. Uh, listen, man, I'm with these two girls and one is going to explain the whole situation. Right. Uh, bottom line, would you have sex with that girl over there? And he starts laughing. Like, there's no way that I'm sitting in a bar by myself and like pussy just lands in my lap. There's no fucking way. So it does because I said, would you have sex with her? He's like, yeah, you think she's hot? Cool. And I, and I'm like, come over. Yeah. Yeah. And they sit down and I'm like, okay, Hey, uh, well, you know, he said you're very beautiful and you know, complete bullshit, blah, blah, blah. You yeah. both know what the fuck you want. So cool. She looks at me and smiles. I'm like, all right, man, Hey, I'm going to get out of here. Please take care of her. And as we're leaving, we lock eyes and he gives me this, like, what the fuck look like? Are you kidding me that this really just happened? And boom, I take the other one home, take her to my hotel. Uh, when we go to have sex, the first thing she did actually was lay on her back and put her feet together and start jerking me off with her feet. Weird flex, but okay. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. So whatever, we end up that, having that's sex. That's like some kind of... Uh, She's Asian, right? Yeah, she was thinking about what the the white businessmen probably did. Yeah. Maybe, there, dude, right? I don't know. Uh, she was normal. She was a local, right? Good I was in Tokyo. Her. And uh, whatever, that's fun, dude. That's a fun way to start off. It was off. great, dude. Yeah. Uh, and, and let me backtrack a little bit. I wasn't going to go out. To be honest, I was there for 24 hours. My sole purpose was to get sushi and get the fuck out of there. And I was coming from Thailand, a week of partying with my friends. Uh, but I land in Tokyo. I, I pay for a layover. I'm like, I just want sushi. I want beer for a day. And I remember I wasn't going to go out. I was going to relax and stay in my hotel room because I partied my ass off in Thailand for a week. And the, I, press, I couldn't figure out how to flush a toilet. There's a bunch of buttons in Japanese. So I just press a button. And I see like that alien versus predator, like the alien mouth like opens and another thing opens and another mouth opens. Well, a tube came out like it was a boudet, but I didn't know it was a boudet oh, at the time. Oh, uh, boudet? A boudet, yeah. yeah. And it was like, bzz, 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 and the last one opens and I'm hovering over the toilet staring at it like, what the fuck is that thing? Psh, squirts me in the face and I start laughing at the top of my lungs. There's nobody in my hotel room and I start cracking up and I'm like, I need to go out. That, that's an omen. I need to go out, right? And so I go out and I, again, I meet these two Japanese girls, fast forwarding, uh, just dumped one off on this dude. Uh, the other one, uh, fast forward, I'm, I'm, you know, in the same getting hotel room. Getting jacked off. Getting jacked off with her feet. feet yeah. And so we bang, right? And we bang multiple times and it was fucking great, dude. Uh, and I wake up in the morning and she's laying on my chest and she looks at me and she smiles and she's like, to teach? And I'm like, to teach? Uh, what, are you, what, are you, what are you talking about? What do you mean to teach? She's like, your tattoo. It means to teach. And I've got my shirt off and she's looking at it. I'm like, no, 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 no. Symbolically by the heart. Like I know the heart anatomically is in the center, but, and I know it's, no, no. It means, it means faith. It means faith. It's for, for a girl that, you know, that's a girl. I'm still waiting for her to call me back. Uh, like it means faith. And she's like, it can mean, let me, no, no, that means to teach. And I'm like, fuck. Right. And, uh, <laughs> I've got, I've got to teach. Luckily, I teach jiu-jitsu now, right? So I guess, and the motherfucker that gave me a tattoo definitely taught me a, a lesson. Yeah. You know, you know so uh, my, my kanji on my chest, symbolically, anatomically by the heart, does not mean faith. It means to teach, right? And that's how I found out. And I got sushi with the girl the next day. She walked me to the train because you got to take a train back to Tokyo, uh, back to the airport from, um, from, I think it's Narita Airport. And you got to take a train and she dropped me off and there's a timer and it's literally like 15 14 and I'm making out with her till the last second. Like, mm, like I'm going to fucking marry I this love chick. You. I love you. And she was so hot, dude. And I ran back on the train and I never saw her again. Uh, I did email her after there was that tsunami. Like, Hey, are you okay? She's like, Hey, Justin. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, Hey, Justin, I am okay. Thanks for checking in and broken English. And then, and then she signed it off with to teach love Anna. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But I emailed her and I had her on my Facebook still. Uh, but fucking, as you guys know, recently my Facebook got deleted. I never will have a photo of her ever again. So Anna, if you're, uh, out there listening, will, last, will yeah, you marry me? Just find I don't her know. again, dude. What's your last How name? Hard could it her last name? Be? I don't know. It's just it's Anna, ju the Japanese girl. Anna, the Japanese girl. <laughs> a I think it's to teach. I think it's to teach. It's something written in Japanese, but I think it means to teach, you know, uh, but fucking a, that's why, didn't I found out. why didn't you just stay if, if it was that rad, like shit was that rad. Bro, why not just stay in Japan? Cause I live for the stories, brother. <laughs> no, I had, I had to come back to the U.S. for a couple of days. Bro, that, that vacation was sick, dude. I, I went to Thailand for like a week, partied, stopped in Japan for a fucking literal day. And then I fly back to the U.S., saw my family. I was like, hey, guys, love you, gotta go. A couple weeks later, boom, I was back in Afghanistan contracting. Like, life was fucking great, dude. 
Sounds great. What if, yeah, what if Anna could have been the one? Dude, never. you know, I'll never know. I, mean, I think what I'm going to spot now. What if she so. had a kid? Oh. Yeah, what if she's got your baby, dude? Fuck, I should email her again. Did you wear a condom? Email her again. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I you still got her email. I do. Yeah, uh, email her. Uh, reach out check to on her girl. for that, that tsunami again. Because that was. Oh, well, there was, was another one, too. <laughs> there was another there were, one. We dropped two bombs on Japan like 60 or 70 years ago. You should yep. check on her about that, too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she dropped the bomb on me by telling me that my whole life is a lie and this tattoo means fucking to teach. God damn it. So jokes wow. on me, I guess, Dan. She also jerked you off with her feet, which I feel like earns her a little leeway in that department. Yeah, also when she was yeah. doing it, like I didn't stop her, but I remember being like, what the fuck? All right, right on. It's it's a tradition over there. No, if a girl is uh, making contact with your penis and it's her decision to do that, just let her do what she wants. She had pantyhose on. I remember that very vividly. So she jacked you up with the pantyhose on? Yeah, she had pantyhose like that's before a tough, we had sex, that's yeah. a tough jerk. Yeah. yeah. Oh no no no! They, they were like the silky. They were like the silky kind, not the fucking ones with the holes. Eh, that's still a rough ride. Yeah. Well, is she, she lube you up? Uh, no. Okay. Man, that's a that's a tough go round. It was a great time. It's almost like the fire starter. And then uh, what other Oof. tattoos do I have? Yeah, every single tattoo is when I had sex in a weird country and had a story. Every single one of them. Seriously? No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I was like, dude. No, I got one in a bunker in Afghanistan. My buddy What's Brandon this one? Lund. What's this one on your... Uh, Which one? It looks like a, a fast forward button. Uh, it's, it's just a forward. It's, I lost a fight, and uh, I realized I've got a... Uh, I'm a lot better when I go forward than when I back up when I fight. A, uh, although I know how to fight better backing up now, it's whatever. At the time, I was better when I would go forward with fighting, and I lost, and I was very depressed. You get depressed, man, when you lose fights. So I was pretty down... Uh, and it was like forward, like move forward partially, right? And yeah, they all have they all have meanings, sort of, but not all of them. Like I've got some, <coughs> I got death, like the Grim Reaper. But yeah, uh, the huge, right? I got one in a dude's fucking kitchen, in a kitchen table. Or I'm sorry, kitchen chair, in uh, Barcelona, Spain. Right, I had the greatest fucking time of my life. Uh, and I tell him, you know, my stay was awesome. Just I didn't get to get a tattoo. And he's my bartender, and he tells me, what a coincidence. I'm a tattoo artist. When do you leave? I'm like, 11.30 tomorrow morning. He's like, well, if you can come early enough, I'll do it for you. I'm like, cool. He gives me his number. Um, I met some girl that night, and they didn't let me get into her hostel. And she was, I remember I was outside of the, the hostel, and they didn't let me in because I wasn't staying there. And so we're making out, and people are going to work the next morning. And she's, like, got her hand in my pants, like, legitimately jerking me off. In broad daylight, people are going to work already. And uh, we're making out. And, <laughs> get yeah, you, people, get you a girl that'll yeah, jerk you off in broad, broad daylight. Broad fucking daylight. Yeah, yeah and, and people are walking by, and in Spanish, they're, they're like, clapping their hands. They're like, ese huero. Like, like get it, you know? Yeah. Like, make, and she's just laughing, drunk, kissing me still, just jerking me off, right? And it was to completion. No, I'm kidding. It wasn't, but... Uh, whatever I'm, no. we're done and i fucking call homeboy and i'm like hey dude it's eight in the morning like you know pretty much where are you turns out he's like a block and a half away from me so i get into his place he tells me that we don't have time to do this unless if i do it here right now in his fucking kitchen and i'm like whatever so he puts a cs la vida like such is life on yeah. my chest and uh he used a stick of deodorant on regular paper and transferred back and forth a couple times, did it to me. I remember I, I didn't, did I tell this already? I no. Like, okay. And, uh, dude, I was wearing the same socks for like three days. Cause you're traveling in Europe. It was fucking disgusting. I get it. Uh, I was in Ibiza before this, didn't have a chance to do laundry. So I tell him, Hey man, do you have socks? This is going to sound kind of weird. Like, you know, after I paid him for the tattoo and he goes, I do, but they're mismatched. One was pink. One was some other color. And he gave them to me, like, they're mismatched. And the tattoo says, así es la vida, which means such is life. And then as he handed me the socks, I was like, ha, así es la vida. And he started laughing. Made it back on my plane. Mind you, I'm still drunk. Uh, and then I start bleeding, and I'm wearing a white shirt. Check on my flight, Budapest, Hungary. Worst flight I've ever been on in my life to date. Like, it was, uh, there's so much turbulence. All the cabins on top were opening, and luggage was flying around. Like, I thought I was going to fucking die. Like, I was so scared. I've never been on an aircraft that bad. And uh, to make matters worse, I'm bleeding on my white shirt. So when I exit the aircraft, I've got red just drenched on my... I just, like, I just had a rough fucking night. Like, some chick's jerking me off. I don't even get a finish. Uh, I get a tattoo in some dude's kitchen, you know. And then I, I exit my aircraft, Christ. and I'm just like, I'm dead. So the first day, we got to uh, Budapest, Hungary. First day, me and my buddy just, boom, we just passed the fuck out. That was day one in Budapest. And then, uh, it was great, man. And then, and then after that, you went back to fucking normal? Uh, no, I went to, what did I do in Budapest? We went to, I think it's called, uh, fuck. 
the crow's peak no uh, big fan else. of the crow's peak crow's peak no i'm thinking of something else yeah uh, it's probably that story that i forgot earlier that i was telling yeah pro- probably that's what it is yeah, yeah. it's it's a uh, circum that's what you call the circumcised Circumcised, yeah. 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 That story, the by the peak. way, was that guy with the was poisoning the water the day I showed up to the unit. They were shooting a crossbow down the hallway of our barracks, and I Jesus walk Christ. out into the halls like I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> is this is how it is or what? And Kingfish is like, ah, that's how it is. I'm like, <laughs> sweet, bro, thanks, thanks, thanks for the help. At any rate, uh, so you didn't complete with the girl jerking you off. No. When's the next time you jizzed at like with blue balls? That's a real thing. It is a real thing. It's a real oh, thing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how, what do you do? What's your plan if you don't get it laid there? Do you just go pound off immediately? Yeah, immediately. Or is, bathroom, wherever you can at that point. You know, Stay away from a playground, obviously, like a well, child's yeah. playground. So but. here's th- this is why I bring this up. Sometimes you just got to jerk off, right? Yeah. Yesterday, we were heading out to dinner. Yep. And um, You like, guys were late. Yeah, I'm like, hey, we need to be Dance there. Hall. No, no. <laughs> no, we need to be there by 730. That's yeah. when everybody's meeting. Uh, so it's seven. I'm like, all right, let's go. Cause it takes half an hour to get there. Uh, he's like, all right, hang on a sec. You got to put something in my hair. That's what he said. Cause he's got these stupid fucking curls or whatever going on right now. Um, you got to put some activator in that shit. Yeah. That's yeah. what I told him to start it's, using it's activator. It's for the goddamn Swayze. Curls yeah. for the girls. Summer Swayze. At any, yeah, at yeah. any rate, uh, he disappears for 15 minutes and I'm like, what in the fuck, man? So, do you want to tell him what you were doing, fuckface? Yeah, I had to beat off. I, like, it was that intense that you were like, yo, you dude, I, I have to do this right all before. Of your yeah, friends. I did, I did. But it just, when you got to go, you got to go. Yeah, you but, know you, what I mean? but you put the inconvenience in all of your, I did, I did. Of all your friends. But, but what I did do is I knew off. that we had to go soon. So, I purposely left the door unlocked and I laid down on the floor facing the door. Because on that other podcast, I talked about when my uncle caught me yeah, yeah. Right, when I was a kid. And he opened the door and I was facing the door to the restroom jerking off. So, I purposely positioned myself on the floor and I kind of chuckled and I left the door unlocked. And I was like, if, if he dies, he dies. Right? Like, yeah. I just started going to work. And I was hoping that Dan would be like, hey, fuck face. We got to fucking go. And he just opens the door and I'm facing him jerking off. Like, oh, So, sorry. not only did this piece of shit make us late. Yeah. We were 18 minutes late. Right? Eh, no, eight, one no eight. Eight. I think you got there about uh, about forty minutes late. Was about, it really forty? Yeah, you're about forty minutes Oof. late. Um, so he made us late. Not only did he make us late, right? But but, you, you but he also tried to fucking entrap me into looking Drago at his you. fucking yeah yeah. He tried to he tried to suck me in. And then you get there because we're, we're having dinner with my wife as well. And then yeah. then I was like, hey man, why are you guys late? And then immediately you were like, well, I had to beat off. Yeah. And I was just like, oh god. Open book, dog. And you get the old like these are your fucking friends. Like th- that's yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. yep. percent. This is me. You know how many times I've met people and I'm like, oh hi, and then they'll like my friend will say, don't worry, I've already prepped her because I'll say a joke and I ease people in the fucked yeah, yeah. up humor, and then I'll be like, sorry, no, I'm really dark, and then I, my friend, I feel yeah. like the majority of us are people that need to be explained before we meet someone. Yeah, right. Like I say mean things to people. Yeah, but not on purpose. I'm not a mean. I don't think I'm a mean person at all. No. But I do say whatever, literally whatever. Like something will pop into my head and I'm just mm-hmm. like, oh, you're really, really short. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I'm super sensitive about them. Like, oh, sorry, bro. Yeah. It's I didn't too, know. Too late now. Like it's, yeah, it just, it just comes out of my mouth. You're, uh, you. Yeah. Loud. Say weird shit. Oh, you yell time. wheelchair at old people. Wheelchair. No, <laughs> that was because of you. <laughs> Fucker. And too this, soon? And Tough this, crowd. This fucking guy just, I don't even know where to go with that. Oh, dude. But I feel like our entire friend group it's disgusting. We're it's, people it's who disgusting need to be explained humans. in advance. Yeah. And it makes it okay if you do explain it in advance, but if you don't, then awkward situations happen yeah. very frequently. All the time. And, and it, look, if you're a weird fucker at home and you're looking to, to join this group, go to Drinking Bros on Facebook, private group. That'll lead us into our Drinking Bro of the Week. I'm going to give this to uh, actually uh, Jeff Simonson. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing that. But uh, we have a gig coming up in Orlando. Yep. We're doing a live show. And we say, hey, I'm going to do it at somebody's house. He is volunteering his house and his pool Fuck for a yeah. gigantic pool party uh, for all the drinking bros in Orlando. And I heard that chapter gets fucked up. Could be a mistake. They do, yeah. The Florida chapter. They get, Not that that's a huge surprise. They get loose. No. Hopefully drinking we bros, become Florida. a Florida man. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully it's us. And Orlando was uh, where Casey Anthony was. So. The uh, love of my life. She's still yeah. single. She's still single. Uh, are you getting a pick at her house? Is that is that where you're stopping by? Because you were like, hey, I want to go by the, the Anthony house. I just want to see where it all went down. Okay. All right. 
This like, is how we'll, it is. We'll get, a, we'll get a candid, like how a nice some, candid of how you s- out there. How some people go to uh, the beaches of Normandy and see where the D-Day invasion happened, I go to Casey Anthony's house. Yeah, I remember our first trip to L.A., everybody wanted to go to O.J.'s house. Yeah. And it got so bad that, yep, boom, uh, we got pictures in front of the house. Yep. Some, somebody bought it and knocked it down. It doesn't exist anymore. Mm. Oh, fuck. Sad. Yeah, they re- rebuilt a new house there, but uh, yeah, everybody... Doesn't mean she still didn't die Everybody there. drives down Bundy still and look, looks, yeah. looks for that fucking house. Yeah. Uh, Fun show, weird show. We've been drinking a lot. Yes. Uh, that's ugh, let's call it. I'm going to go get some sushi. Yeah. Let's get some fucking sushi. I got to piss really bad. Yeah. Uh, for Build the Wall, Governor. Uh, D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway. I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. Ooh.